morning. <coughs> warm welcome to all the participants of this webinar. We shall begin with a word of prayer, and I request Mrs. A. Lyon to pray to the Lord for the success of this webinar. Mrs. Lyon. Let me place ourselves in the presence of Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day and all your loving kindness and blessings on us. We thank you for giving us this opportunity to come together and share our time, ideas, and our views with each other. We ask you, Lord, to bestow your guidance and divine wisdom on our esteemed speakers as they share their knowledge and expertise with us. We see your blessings on all the participants as well. God of power and might, the whole universe is at your command. We pray that you help the world overcome this deadly virus so that life become normal once again for us. We thank you for being with us. We thank you for being with us, providing for us, and protecting us. May we always remember that we are not alone in this and that you journey with us. Now, as we begin our webinar, we pray we would broaden our thinking and transform our understanding and help us retain the invaluable learning experiences that we derive from this webinar. And may we be able to appreciate its significance in our lives. We ask this name of our and Savior. Amen. And now I invite Dr. Mrs. V. Prakash, Principal IT College, to come address. Dr. Prakash. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So on behalf of Isabella Thoburn College, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all the participants who have in this webinar from uh, different parts of the country, both students and faculty of uh, different institutions. And particularly, I would like to welcome Dr. Adela Paul, uh, who has been former of college. Welcome, ma'am, on this uh, board, or uh, should I say welcome back? and also the former principal of Western College of Education, uh, Chennai, also Dr. Rachna Singh, head department of Rati, and our third resource person, Dr. Sunita Kalender from the Beard department of Isabella Thoburn College. The topic chosen uh, for this webinar is very, very relevant in these times. Um, uh, educators key to meet challenges caused by COVID-19. Emotional intelligence or emotional quotient as we know it is as important as uh, intelligence quotient and for a holistic development we need the intellectual quotient, the emotional quotient, the spiritual quotient and the social quotient. All of them are equally important. Emotions as it is are we have come to do with them. Otherwise, they overpower us and get the better of logical thinking, especially in times like these, when there is so much anxiety, there is so much uncertainty. And emotions keep changing circumstances. And sometimes they get out of hand um, if we don't learn to deal with them properly, especially in the present scenario when our world has changed completely. Many of us, especially children and youth, find it difficult to handle emotions. The recent suicide of a famous Bollywood actor who had everything one could desire has raised many questions and doubts. And the emotional quotient has become a topic of discussion to be very, very seriously. There is a big responsibility on parents and educators to uh, help children and young students in dealing with their emotions, especially those leading to despair, discouragement, and destruction. I am reminded uh, of a verse from the Bible 
from Romans chapter 12, verse uh, 12, it says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. I think it's uh, uh, what we need to do, especially when we are going through difficult times. I'm happy that the BH department of Isabella Thoburn College has chosen such a relevant topic for this uh, webinar. I'm sure that our eminent speakers idle insights and share their experiences, which will be he very helpful in preparing educators to deal with their students. I wish all of you the very best as you deliberate uh, on these issues and learn the experience and uh, valuable insights of our uh, very learned resource persons. All the very best. best. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Prakash. May I now request Dr. Mrs. S. Linder, head of the B.Ed. Department IT College, to kindly introduce the theme of the webinar. Dr. Calendar. Thank you, Mrs. Lyle. I take this opportunity to welcome all of you once again. The theme of this webinar is Emotional Intelligence, Educators' Key to Meet the Challenges Due to COVID-19. Emotional intelligence plays a vital role in education. It impacts directly teachers' productivity. It is observed that teachers who possess emotional skills and in their day-to-day -day behavior model, emotionally intelligent behavior are more successful and satisfied in their also in their personal life. Emotionally intelligent teachers are more resilient and proactive in responding to stressful situations. No doubt, teachers are the main pillars of education who transform students into a productive and responsible citizens on whom the growth, development, and entire social fabric of a country depends upon. In the present of uncertainty due to COVID-19, and therefore the sudden transformation of teacher's role as online teacher has posed many challenges to teachers such as turning teaching material into digital mode, internet connectivity, sharing hardware resources at home, ensuring quality and effectiveness in online learning, keeping students attentive and coping up with distress calls by parents and students. Besides, teachers are facing insecurity about their salary and jobs, especially those who are working in private schools. All this has created immense pressure and stress on teachers and has caused serious logical problems of anxiety, worry, and fear. These issues require to be addressed on an urgent basis. Against this backdrop, the Present parental emotional intelligence educators' key to meet challenges due to COVID-19 is conceived and conceptualized. We have with us Dr. Adela Paul, former principal Isabella Thoban College, Lucknow, and education who will deal with the main theme and will share her views on emotional intelligence and how it is an educator's key to meet the challenges posed by COVID-19. We also have with us Rachna, head of the Department of Psychology, <coughs> Agra College, Agra, who will take up the theme of the first session, Emotional Intelligence, a Critical Factor in Fostering Resilience in Teachers. The theme the second role of emotionally intelligent teacher in times of crisis will be taken by me. Taking no more time, I now invite <laughs> Mrs. Lai, Introduce to us Dr. Edna Paul. It's an honor and my proud privilege to introduce to you Dr. Adela Paul, who shall deliver the keynote address today. Dr. Paul's career spans over five decades, which is indicative of her love, dedication, and passion for the profession. Dr. Paul has served as principal of prestigious and renowned institutions 
Lighting College Education Chennai, Methodist School, Kolkata, and our very own IT College, Lucknow, where she was principal in the late 1980s. I feel pleased to mention here that I was appointed to the college during her regime and was lucky to receive training and grooming as a young lecturer under her able and loving guidance. I can think that Dr. Paul has all the qualities one looks for in a leader. Her commitment, honesty, integrity, compassion, and above all, her humility are inspires and makes her stand head and shoulders above many. Although Dr. Paul was involved with several institutions in various administrative capacities, she lost some of her academic pursuits and continued to contribute richly to the field. She has to her credit several research papers and publications in both national and national fields, which have been greatly appreciated by the teaching fraternity. Shouldering so many responsibilities is not an easy task. But Dr. Paul always conducted herself for and duty, no matter what the challenge. I could go on with Dr. Paul's achievements and qualities, but with time being a constraint at this juncture, I would conclude and invite Dr. Adela Paul to kindly take over. Dr. Paul. When there are online work, there is still room, scope, for building strong relationships. We can succeed both at our places of work and if they are students, they can succeed in their studies. We can, with emotional intelligence, see that achievement is possible. But as a previous slide, I haven't finished. Yes, achieve um, our, not only our career, but our goals can be reached because for everything, it's a num setting a number of goals and achieving this gives the sense of success for anybody every day. And we need to, when we're thinking of understanding our emotions, we need to connect with our own feelings. And we have to turn our intention, not just thinking that I could do this, I could do that, but the intention has to be turned to action as well. Only then there is a, a worth development and movement. We need to make informed decisions that matter most to us because we are the people who feel either for something or against it. And therefore the decisions that we take must affect us. It's not always wise only to listen to others. There are times we there are there, there is wisdom in discussing, but ultimately the person takes the decision. Next slide, please. Um, Daniel Goldman's model of uh, self uh, competence of emotional intelligence. He gives five different uh, factors. He talks about uh, being an authority on this. He talks about uh, being competent in our Emotional intelligence comes from first self awareness, the ability to focus on our own emotional state, whatever we have, to be able to focus on that because we need to be aware of how we feel, whether we are angry, whether we are happy, whether we are sad, whether we are unnecessarily having aggressive attitude, all of these, to be able to aware of that is something which he says is the first one. Then, because 
all this has to do with our feelings. Then the self-regulation, where we select the emotion. If we are so correct in knowing what we have, then we can regulate it to the extent of even selecting the emotion that we want to experience. We can practice this and with a lot of self-control, we will be able to achieve this. Another he talks about is self-motivation. Because motivation is something which is useful when it is intrinsic motivation. And emotions positively change through the pursuit of goals that we set and reach out for them. Empathy, and just a little while ago talking about to feel what somebody else is feeling and nurturing relationship. Because when we understand how emotions work in other people also, and we see that, then we can demonstrate emotional interest and compassion to others also, which will help us in building bridges and starting relationships. Yes, next slide. Next slide. Yeah. And he talks about there are four keys uh, and skills which can help us to increase in our emotional intelligence or emotional caution. What uh, um, Daniel Goldman speaks of, the self-awareness, self-management, where we are able to control our own emotional behavior as well as dealing with others and social awareness of what is happening around us. Because something that works very closely with emotional intelligence is social intelligence. Being aware of what is happening around us. We, we know that no person is an island. No man is an island. We are living in a world with others as well. The social awareness of how other people feel and how we feel for every little situation that we come across is something that will help us to be able to increase in our emotional intelligence. Relationship management is again something which uh, is something which needs to be built up. And uh, now, for instance, in a time like this, um, we find that two of the colleges here in uh, Madras, uh, Loyola College and Madras Christian College have um, the students, because students are very few. One of the things that we find in Tamil Nadu and in Chennai is that in the last uh, uh, week, the maximum number of uh, uh, coronavirus deaths has been in the um, range of age 20 to 40. Many in the uh, age range of 20s and 30s. There are a number of young people who do not follow the social distancing. They are traveling around, uh, just going around on bikes. And there is so much of there is in infection spread. But we find that these two colleges, there was a number of students, but still, of course, considering the fact that there are thousands of students, it is only um, barely, not even a hundred, hundred odd students in these colleges, which got together to see that they um, collected food packets, collected provisions, and went out to give to a number of people who have no jobs because they're at home during this um, season of lockdown and with the prevalence of this pandemic. Now, that is, they are able to be socially aware. They're able to create relationship with people who are in need. We find that these are possible when we exercise emotional intelligence. Next slide. Next slide. So emotional intelligence is very important because it affects our own performance at work. Because when we understand us, ourselves, we're able to perform better. We're able to control and prevent what needs to be prevented. That acts to, adds to our physical health. Because we all know how the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic 
nervous system works, particularly with respect to our emotions. And that makes way for good physical health. And similarly, good mental health. Good mental health gives us good physical health also. Because it's uh, controlling of our emotions are very, many, very, very important. Because we find that uh, diabetes, which is so common in India, stress-induced diabetes. We find that uh, anxiety, worry, stress, when not controlled, then they find that it affects people on the negative side. So with exercising of um, emotional intelligence, we can help our own physical health, mental health, even our relationships with others. Definitely it will improve as we understand, recognize, and understand emotions. And of course, it does improve our social intelligence. We just talked about social awareness. Next slide, please. Daniel Goldman tells that emotional quotient or emotional intelligence counts for twice as much as our intelligence quotient. Next slide. Because we in the school talk a great deal about our uh, uh, improvement of mental capacities, mental capabilities. But rather than IQ, it's EQ that works. I, am, I just thought we'll uh, look at the history of our uh, teaching learning situation, how it has been started with uh, the schools were teacher centered because it was only the teacher who walked about with a cane and uh, the teacher was all important in the class. Years later, with the, uh, in fact, only in the 20th century, people with the improvement of, um, and the, uh, the development of psychological principles, people gave importance to the child. And we thought of child-centered learning and therefore they thought uh, of having different methodologies to adapt for the different kinds of classes, different uh, kinds of uh, pupils, students. And then of course, we've had with the technological revolutions, there's so much of education technology that is being used. And uh, then moved on to flexibility because the people wanted both horizontal flexibility as well as vertical mobility and uh, therefore education with many of the hard and fast rules of watertight compartments gave way to flexibility and uh, with the idea of education for all, all and be making it available for all non-formal patterns stepped in because we know that uh, again in the 20th century open learning distance learning uh, became very popular and of course e-learning and online learning and now of course with the COVID-19 we are in the uh, inescapable situation of life that has been affected. Next slide. We um, have to change again. We are in this situation where a whole lot has gone with the um, online education we, you just had a, <coughs> one um, webinar earlier when you talked about the paradigm shift into the um, technological um, leaning that we have now come to with a lot of digital learning and all that. So I'm not going into that. Uh, the next slide, please. We find that uh, yeah, there's a whole lot of shift for all this online digital education when this is something which is a conscious shift for all. It has become an integral part of the system because many of you are already using it. It does allow flexibility because uh, students who are not, not able to can uh, do things at their own pace and it's not, it's something which is uh, this digital education which teachers have to use as well as to 
is meant for all, not just the tech savvy person alone. And uh, there are a lot of wrong myths that people think that teachers will be replaced. It's not so. Teachers not going to be replaced. And students are very willing to change because they're so much younger, they're so pliable in their thinking that they adapt to change much more easily than the teachers themselves. And they are willing because you, you, we can see how little kids operate uh, the smartphones. And anyway, there is uh, no gap between because if the teacher's emotional intelligence, there's no gap between the kind of input that the teacher um, gives and the intake on the student side, there is, there is no gap because when the teacher plans accordingly, that's what will happen. Now, the next one, there are these changes that we do. Um, we have seen a lot of uh, changes because over the years we know that there are uh, a number of things that we have um, changed. If you take the, there was a time when fees had to be paid only by money. It changed to banks coming in, the challenge being paid into the thing. Similarly, application forms, admission, but we've changed over to online admission. And uh, there is so much of um, what is done, whether it is uh, issuing certificates, I mean, much is done online. There are a number of changes that we were already adapted to. And uh, of course, with education, with intelligence, teachers have to not only adapt, be adapted to learning and teaching, but experiment with newer approaches and uh, use of the internet and so on. They have to prepare themselves. Here's what happened this year, March 31st, in uh, the African country, Botswana. They had the government declaring the first COVID case on the 31st of March. Very quickly, one of the youth-driven NGOs mobilized to collect about 10,000 students' mobile numbers to provide text message-based instruction. They established hotlines to answer questions from parents and students. And that was a time of transition. They got into action so quickly. And uh, people do use preparedness is there. There are online teaching tools, online teaching techniques. Um, the next slide. And there are, there's an online assessment. There's online, uh, uh, this thing, work that is done. There is all of this is part. Yes, the next one. Being prepared. We have so much to do. The, even the remote classroom. The emotional intelligence teacher has to pick up. But what will be our role as teachers? Because we know that it's not just the same old classroom just shifted into a virtual classroom. But teachers, the two emotionally intelligent teachers have to change their role. A number of new roles also have to be adapted because syllabus and curriculum designers are needed. Content developers are needed. Knowledge sharers. There is so much to be done because when you find that Children are shut up. Then they are. It, there are a whole lot of difficulties. I'm not going to into that because you had it probably in your last uh, webinar. There are, of course, uh, compared worldwide, it says when the developed countries have these uh, online systems so easily uh, available to more than 90% of the children and people, adults involved. Whereas in India, it's uh, not even 35% of them who have the sources. Although there are people who do have smartphones, there may be 
one smartphone in the house and uh, which of the children will use them. There are a whole lot of things that need to be developed because we find that how many uh, games do we have for all the kind of units of lessons that we have? Because we find that in this lockdown season, even adults love to answer little quizzes and puzzles uh, um, and uh, uh, things that exercise their thinking capacity on WhatsApp. And how much more children need because they are within um, in the lack of uh, their facilities to be able to run around and play. Uh, how do we cope for, with that? What do we do? It was uh, Dr. Uh, Radha Krishnan who said, uh, next slide, uh, true, true teachers are those who help us think for ourselves. An intelligent, uh, emotional intelligent teacher to manifest in action the emotional intelligence. Because how much do we think for ourselves? How much do we teach others also to think? All of us here now listening are teachers. We're all interested in mental health. We are interested in productivity. We want to have quality education. There are many, many who are in the grip of fear right now with this pandemic. Fear paralyzes our thinking and action. Emotional intelligence should enable understanding the reality of the situation. We have to understand the social reality and we need to be honest with ourselves when we understand our own emotions as well as theirs. Particularly with ourselves, we need to honestly assess our emotions and to be able to assess them accurately. Uh, next slide. Um, the, the golden rule is that we have uh, teachers should be careful to show only those emotions which they want to see in others. What we want to see in others, that is what we should display. The next one, the next slide. <clears throat> the next one is, next slide please. Yeah, we need to recognize emotion in ourselves and in others. We need to understand the cause and consequences because every feeling that stems from it, there are consequences that follow, especially if it's an outburst in anger or um, something which is aggressive. And uh, we need to be able to, emotionally until teachers need to be able to emotion, label our emotions accurately. I was just saying that a little while ago. And expressing emotions appropriately. This is something which is part of our emotional development because we don't display emotions the way uh, children do. We outgrow things and we need to express emotions appropriately and regulate our emotions effectively as well because that uh, counts in the kind of emotional development that we show in ourselves. The next slide. Um, Another uh, learned uh, person, Aristotle, said that anyone can become angry easy. Be angry to the right degree with the right person to the person whom we show at the right time or the right purpose and in the right way. This is not easy. That's what I'm saying. Teachers with emotional intelligence. Where would we fit in with students, colleagues, the multitudes of needy persons in India? The next um, slide. Um, virtual emotion intelligence. We need to 
show that there are emotional skills which hold up the cultural difference. When we deal with cultural differences in our classrooms, it's easy. When we see uh, people physically present, but control. But when get to be able to bury cultural differences when dealing with our uh, children. The same way um, when we're dealing with in uh, uh, things online, things that are written sometimes in the absence of people around, maybe we pay too much attention to what is written. We don't need to be digging into that that much, but to be able to do it meaningfully. But empathy should be excessively shown, excessively displayed, because that is what it's, it's a big, big part of emotional uh, intelligence. And the communication, the previous slide, um, yes, stress management is something which is needed as well. Communication should be productive, and there should be less confrontation for which uh, empathy does help. Today's students need someone who understands their feelings without judging them. Empathy shown by teachers can make a positive, lasting impact on a student's mind because that is sadly lacking. We need to believe, project, and estimate, and plan, and become. Next, uh, next slide. Oh, yeah. How can a teacher use emotional intelligence? We need to note so much of disturbance. We need to... Can I have the slide, please? The last, next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. We need to observe. Next slide. Let's have the next slide. Next slide. The last slide. Yeah. Note the body language. It conveys a lot, even of the emotions. A teacher has to listen more and speak less. We need to be able to get curious with our students. Because if we do get curious and ask the right question, there is a lot that we will be able to unearth from them rather than getting furious with them or angry with them. They may be say something or do something. Slide, please. Slide, yes. um, but we don't have to get furious or angry with them. We need to elicit pride in what they do because that boosts their ego as well. Because ego is very small, important emotionally. And emotions are contagious, both positive and negative. What we feel can be contagious. What others feel also can be contagious. Therefore, emotional, yes, you can, yeah, slides are over. Emotional uh, intelligence is needed more than intelligence. And I have, there's too much disturbance. Um, emotional intelligence is needed more than intelligence. Who's talking there, please? Somebody's talking. A good teacher should want to know the feelings of students to act accordingly. Uh, we can, they can, only then there can be harmony in relationship. Emotional quotient consists of 80% of success in life. So educating the heart of the child is much more important for the overall development rather than just their mental development. Students do not care how much teachers know, but they rather care how much teachers care. We have seen last week the shooting star who was uh, tragically um, dead because of suicide. And uh, one of the things that uh, many WhatsApp messages have been floating is, about AQ, which is adversity quotient. 
uh, that is turning obstacles into <laughs> opportunities. The ability to handle adversities. Another name is resilience of grit. I don't want to go into it because the next two speakers are going to talk about uh, resilience. Yes, so Shantan had the depression for a long period and uh, there's not even a single thread that connects an individual to another person. That's when a person is driven to suicide. But there is ample scope for teachers to be able to build the bridges, build good relationships with children. Now the complaint given by a number of students is that schools do not, schools and colleges don't teach what the employees really want. Book learning is not good enough. Now COVID-19 is a global pandemic that requires strong leaders from diverse sectors to work together for a common goal. New innovative ways should improve quality education. A few thoughts that I would like to close with are ideas of modernity, having supremacy over nature with learning does not pay. People have life-saving needs. People need psychosocial support at this time of the pandemic. <laughs> so far, we have become very adept at dealing with the outside working world. Now we've been compelled to come to terms in their roles because everybody's in their homes. The lost art of understanding the inner world, understanding our fear, anger, egos, aggression, pain, our longings, our dreams, our prayers, these are lost. And we find there is a lot of boredom, meaninglessness, domestic violence. And we find that we need to nurture our inner selves evolve only that will evolve endurance patience and other hidden possibilities for life affirmation teachers with emotional intelligence have a big role in this understanding distance has bred fear and doubt in the authoritarian missionary machinery of our governments and authorities that enables just surviving biologically the ecstasy of human company is lost can we restore the power of love and human company in this new world? Our known world has collapsed with bookish knowledge. That has proved time. Where will we, as we rely on emotional intelligence, answer these queries <laughs> to add meaning into our lives? I want you to watch a video. I was not able to send it across, but I just played a short video about on making a difference. How do I get out of this? Okay, let me leave and come come back.
हेलो यस डॉक्टर कैलेंडर आई एम आई वाज नॉट एबल टू लिसन व्हाट वाज गोइंग ऑन डॉक्टर पॉल इज ट्राइंग टू रन हर वीडियो आई सो ओके is dr paul disconnected dr rajya no she is there okay yes i am trying to i think she is trying for the video हेलो डॉक्टर पॉल कैन यू हियर मी डॉक्टर पॉल देर इज सम टेक्निक technological problem she might be connected again so please bear with us डिफरेंस in somebody then, <laughs> then give your concluding comment <laughs> yes that's okay so that that is the last so, so, we can that, proceed yeah. yes you can proceed because i said that with our bookish knowledge and all that collapse there is much more to do with our uh, emotional intelligence there are newer things 
innovative ways that we have to think and come out with what we are to do so that children, students are able to be engaged for all, all the aspects of what they're missing out on being in classes. Because just having classroom bookish learning online, that's okay, but there's more to it. When they come to an what are the other things that we are going to? These are the things that we have to um, keep in mind. We think of emotional intelligence as well. Thank you for the opportunity. Sorry, sorry for the time and delay. No, no, that's absolutely all right. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Paul, for this very enlightening and thought-provoking talk. I'm sure all of us have greatly benefited by it. Thank you once again. And now I request Dr. Caroline Beck to kindly give necessary instructions for the webinar. Thank you, ma'am. There are other points also. Good afternoon, everyone. I extend a warm welcome to all the participants and would like to draw your attention to certain instructions. All the participants are requested to keep their audio mute and video off. Please do not share your screen during the session as it might interfere with the presentations of the speakers. Kindly send your questions or queries to the chat box only. After the webinar session, are requested to fill and submit the form so that each certificate can be generated. May I request Dr. Joseph to please, please introduce our next speaker? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rajan. Now we begin our first session. And it is my privilege to invite and introduce our first speaker, Dr. Rachna Singh, Associate Professor and Head of the Department of Psychology, Agra College, Agra. Over the last 32 years, Dr. Singh has been recognized in the field of experimental, social, and positive psychology. She has a number of presentations and publications to her credit at the national and international level. She has also published and translated the postgraduate and undergraduate psychology courses and manuals for IGNU. At present, she is also one of the esteemed team members of the COVID-19 Mental Health Helpline, Samwal, an initiative of the Agra administration and is addressing the various problems through telephonic psychological counseling arising in the mind of the people due to coronavirus epidemic and conditions of lockdown. I now invite Dr. Singh to share her views on the sub-theme emotional intelligence, a critical factor in fostering resilience in teachers. Dr. Rachna Singh. Can you hear me? <clears throat> Dr. Sonika, am I visible? Uh, Dr. Singh, yes, you're visible. Good morning. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Am I audible to all? I need a confirmation, please. Am I audible to all? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, fine, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's nice to be in such a one of the speakers in such an August gathering, and it was amazing to see such an exhaustive lecture by Dr. Adela Paul 
and after that one doesn't have much to say or much to speak because uh, she has nearly covered everything and on the onset before starting i would like to thank dr vinita uh, prakar the principal and dr samita calendar for having me on and giving me an opportunity to share my view with you all before beginning my lecture i would like to uh, share two anecdotes uh, dr rachna i'm sorry to interrupt you i'm yeah. muting everyone please unmute yourself only i'm going to mute everyone okay okay, okay i'll do that I have... yes ma'am now it's okay okay thank you so much i would like to share because uh, as a psychologist our job is mostly to observe what's happening around so i'll share two anecdotes with all the participants and all the teachers and all my colleagues and friends out there the other day uh, in my colony i was talking to my young neighbor who were, who had two young school going children and while well, asking that what is happening with them said, oh no it's all good they are all having online classes and you know they also have to wear their uniforms and sit quietly all the time while the teacher is speaking episode 1 episode 2 i talked to one of my senior colleagues whose students are uh, college going and after inquiring what is happening with them and how are they keeping busy oh, no ma'am they keep getting all these videos and online lectures so it's uh, the they are not missing out on anything by these two episodes i like to impress that all the teacher by default are corona warriors these caring professionalists who have a caring profession they are keeping these homes all the homes sound and keeping all the people together by keeping all the students occupied i'll on, on this note of thanking and applauding all the teachers out there all the teachers who are in present or to be i would like to begin my uh, lecture and the topic uh, can i share my screen now hello i would like to share my screen now uh, ma'am should i share the screen i i'll do that okay okay yes ma'am okay. okay so the topic given to me today is emotional intelligence a critical factor in fostering resilience in teachers we all are teachers around here so we i'll be talking to them i'm talking about them my observation so as we have already heard so much about and so in such details about the emotional intelligence i will begin my lecture bottom from the down up because for emotional intelligence or to nurture that what uh, has been asked to me to put light upon i think the adaptability of an individual is the prime factor one first needs to be adaptable now like you can see being adaptable means you are able to or willing to change in order to suit different condition we are at present in a very very different condition we have been in total lockdown we are now in partial lockdown and due to covid 19 scare are having a very different condition right now mostly teachers also when we are adaptable we see that reality has changed we accept that we don't deny that reality because we admit that we have a new reality we can find new approaches to manage our responses to make changes in the world by that definition it is so clear and so evident that all the teachers all the uh, teaching and learn in involved teaching learning process they are all adapted they have adapted to this reality that yes we have to teach and work from home now when we had big 
they, I say they adapted, especially, I am stressing on this word, because we teachers are all used to doing teaching in a uh, contact, contact uh, situation, do it face to face. But now we are talking like you all. I am talking and there's hardly on any face to see and look at. But I'm still talking. You might be able to see me right there, wonders of digital uh, performances. So now first step, adaptability. We all are adapted. All the teachers are adapting to this new situation. Which brings me uh, exactly uh, right into the next point, resilience, which is the topic. Resilience is defined as the process of adapting well. Again, we are talking of adaptation. We have to adapt when we are resilient in place of all the adversity, trauma, tragedy, or significant sources of stress. You know, we all have all these components around us right now. Also, resilience is the ability to withstand adversity and miss back from difficult life events. So what was difficult here? We are all at home, we are comfortable, but what was difficult? We were in classroom teaching, we were into examinations, and all of a sudden, in March, it's so fairly recent, we were all sent home. We had no clue what is going to happen, but as the resilience grew, we were down, we were in total lockdown for uh, a month or so, more than that, but and wondering what will happen to our classes, how we'll be managing, but then this comes up all this digital media, all the internet, and we bounce back. All the teachers, all the workers, all in teaching and profession, they really bounce back in a fantastic moment. Resilience, uh, I would like to just go back, is a word which is taken from physics, when, which uh, literally means that when a subject object is deformed, loses its shape, after uh, losing its shape, when it is released, it comes back into an erosion shape, like a, a, a rubber band. When you stretch the rubber band, you stretch and stretch it to its extreme limit. But when you release it, it takes its original form. This is what resilience is. When we were stretched to our, we were so worried, what is going to happen? How will the classes going on? How will we handle our students? But then everybody bounced back and Negating this tough condition, this difficult life event, everybody jumped back, gained the same form, became the teachers once again, and they are teaching online. They are teaching through internet. Um, Dr. Paul already uh, explained in her last slide how in detail, how, what are the teaching learning methods these days. Resilience has also been described as dynamic process, where an individual adapts positive. I'm repeating those things again and again for it, just to stress my point that uh, we come to know to what actually resilience is. resilience is. A process where individual adapts positively. Now again, there is a stress on this positivity, not with grudge, not with grievance, but positively to an adverse condition. Now, if you are resilient, and now when I say you, I mean all the teachers are there. I'm not speaking the word again and again, the teachers or the teaching fraternity. But when I say you, it is, I'm addressed to you and me, all teachers in different schools and colleges and uh, post practices. But what resilience provides us, what it means to be resilient. Resilient, meaning resilient does not mean that we don't feel the difficulty. Resilient does not eliminate stress. Stress is there. But does not erase the life's difficulties. They too are there. You understand? Uh, and all the students, if they are there, I just want them to uh, make clear that it, resilience does not mean that they don't feel, they are so strong that they don't feel any stress. They don't get worried. They don't have any difficulty. Resilient people do feel pain, they do feel loss and grief, and whatever comes after a setback, when you are sad, when you have a setback, you feel also such emotion, you are disturbed. But when we say okay, what a resilient person is, we mean mental outlook, how they look at the world, 
how they look at the situation, how they look at this neg negative situation, which uh, previously I said they look at it positively. When they look at this situation, the mental outlook is such that allows them to work through such feeling and recover. That is bounce back. The elastic is gaining its original shape. They are coming back together, holding things together, or they again take, get into their form and they are working. What just now I explained what means to be a resilient person, but if you think how to recognize how to be one, how to do this, am I a resilient person? How to define myself, how to discover myself. So, so just to give it a thought, what do resi resilient people do? Resilient people, you can see the slide around there, they hold positive views of themselves and their abilities. Like in this situation, in this COVID-19 pullback where people are home, the teachers are home, they have, they think, they can't say, what is going on now? This is not this is not the way. They know that they are teachers, and yes, there will definitely be some way. They think good about themselves, that we are good, we can do something. They have a positive opinion about themselves, they have a good opinion about their abilities. A resilient person also apart from having good opinion about his being positive, feeling good about his abilities and themselves, they have a capacity to make realistic plans and stick to them. When I say realistic, uh, one thing comes to my mind. My member saying, uh, yeah, everybody knows that how uh, internet, through internet, online or e-learning is done. I've come across certain institutions which the teachers do not have all those resources. They do not have uh, everything or uh, such material to communicate with the students to prepare the lessons. So what I've seen, and this is how they think, they are not worried about that. They don't worry about if I do not have a webcam, if I do not have a laptop, they are just working through the smartphones. They're using the smartphones and in such a it was sweet thing to know, they give hand to notes. Now there's nothing to feel bad about that. What they are doing, they are doing their bit. They are making a realistic, in spite of worry about not having the right resources, they did, they made a, assess the situation, made a realistic assessment that it can be done and it can be done in different way. Ma'am uh, already told, we have, or such resilient people have internal locus of control. Well, they themselves decide why are they doing this? Do they need to do this? Why do they want to be involved in this online teaching? It's not because because they are not even getting any uh, why from the people around. Huh? They don't come to know. They are not into uh, uh, interactive situation. But they feel their duty because they need to decide, they decide it on their own, that this is to be done. Again, a what marks a resilient person away from the other people is that they are good communicators. Or teachers are, I believe, but at the one who is resilient is more so. Next, be the person who is resilient. How can you uh, know that he's a resilient person? He views themselves rather as a fighter not the victim. Earlier I repeated that in spite of crying that they do not have the resources, our feeling that they are not victimizing themselves. They are bounced back they're like good fighters and they are putting forward their good foot and teach again. Again, because all this is about emotional intelligence so to know a resilient person always does have high emotional intelligence. This is a prerequisite. So this is what we have to uh, connect. Like somebody <laughs> is scribbling. So high emotional intelligence is part of a 
person in person, this is how you can recognize them or make them out from one who is not so resilient. Again, if you think these things happen, you, one has the ability to, to bounce back. If one can bounce back, then one can gain its original shape. But does this happen naturally? Everybody is resilient or is there something we can build upon? Is this a skill? If, we can, if it is not there naturally, you don't feel that you are communicating well or you can't improvise. So is, does that make you not resilient? But don't lose heart because resilience can be maintained. We can build it. We can learn it. It is a skill in a way, although it is a dynamic process all through. But yes, in a way, we can still learn it and we can build it. So how can we build? The resilience, first of all, one has to, a person who has to, we are talking about resilience now, how to bounce back. One has to cherish all the social support and interaction. You don't have to say no to everybody. In this situation, see, ma'am is uh, like, is such a, such a beautiful example of resilience, I believe, Dr. Paul was. Yes, she reached out and there's people helping. You can, you're helping. If I, my slide would not have functioned, you are there. We would have asked you. So, social support, social interaction, this is to be cherished. When you learn, learn to cherish this, you believe you are a resilient person. Next, a resilient person or how to build resilience in yourself and teachers. When I'm, I'm talking about teachers, if they are failing all these uh, tough conditions of online and e-learning, that they cannot uh, do the thing the way they want to, the way they have been doing. But still, they have to learn. Because and teach these problems like a learning process. We all have done this, I believe. Most of the fraternity has done this. It is amazing. They are t treating this problem. This scare of online and e-learning, most of the people would not have done this, but they are doing now. So I believe, and I then compliment that most of the people who are bouncing men and on, who are on this online portals, they are treating this problem, this care, as a learning process. So you can build your resilience by making all your learning, uh, sorry, all your problem a process to learn something new and not be scared by it. Next thing, which is oft done when you are low when you are not feeling good, when you are uh, facing difficulties, you dramatize. You dramatize the situation, you hype upon it, say how tough it is, how it is tough it is to do these things right now, where to get all the resource. But when you have to build your resilience, avoid it. Avoid dramatizing crisis. Once you avoid dramatizing it, you view it as it is in its real proportions. Don't blow it out of proportion. For that, you have to take a positive action plan. Positive action plan? We all, I think these all the things, what is so wonderful about resilience is each and every one of you must be finding so many examples in your heart and mind about and believing that yes, one is resilient. We all, we all Indians, I would say, are resilient. They are truly resilient. They, in your face of hardship, they don't get back easily. We can bar a few examples, but mainly I'm talking. And I'm talking about the teaching fraternity. When you have to be resilient, when you want to be resilient, you can build on your ability of making positive action plan and you should take positive action of course let's connect to the students let well if nothing people uh, give on whatsapp they connect to with the students on whatsapp groups that doesn't need much of know-how so they take a plan they make a positive and take a positive action just they can connect with the students they can uh, give forth the information to them next Nurture positive view of yourself. If you want to build this, if you want to be, if you think you're not, 
if you are down then you should believe that you can become resilient as the book says and nurture a positive view of yourself don't say you know we sometimes tend to do this dr calendar uh, can identify with this uh, and if i with my uh, this opinion we sometimes tend to negate ourselves we sometimes to put down ourselves down in our own eyes so a resilient person is the one who nurtures a positive view of themselves a then not say ki are ab ye kahan se layenge notes aur hum kaise karenge and then no no ki bachche to meri sunte hi nahi i think i am not a good teacher no you have to believe that yes you are doing your bit and you are good. well a resilient person needs to relax also so once when you are on path of building your resilience you have to cultivate your hobby cultivate hobbies but you want to do because you have to be doing something else also apart from what your job is what your daily routine is so cultivating hobbies whatever you like singing dancing these days uh, there is a uh, one minute cooking uh, shows going on in uh, they are just cropping up on internet you have so many recipes you cook you serve you care and take care of a plant and you find a balance in whatever your work condition to feel then again this is the time or a resilient person must and must celebrate their success if they are able to communicate with their students they are doing this uh, it's all e learning it is a cause of celebration they are taking things on to so celebrate your success a person or a resilient person does not uh, try to cover up their success don't try to Uh, negate their success they have to celebrate let other people know it's yes uh, you can't say another word if uh, i may not boasting you don't confuse it with boasting about yourself you feel good about yourself and you celebrate what good you done and again we are uh, into emotional intelligence and we've been talking about emotion so a person who is resilient who wishes to be resilient as does not bottle negative emotions it does not have bad feeling for people they always find a way to communicate now after building this resilience well then uh, as my topic is the a crit factor emotional intelligence is in fostering resilience so i come back to emotional intelligence now that if you are resilient if you are a resilient person you if you have built your resilience in good way you are certainly an emotionally intelligent person so what is emotional intelligence we've been through this we've been talking about this uh, in last hour But I would again like to repeat it because the, there is nothing uh, we have to talk about it, talk about it, and repeat it until you imbibe it, until you feel it, until you do it. So, emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize, understand, utilize, and regulate emotions effectively in everyday life. What you can now visualize is the beautiful, colorful slide. Now, Dr. Paul has put up, which said about this only that an intelligent person who is emotionally intelligent can easily recognize what the emotions are in other people. आप सामने बैठे अगर दुखी हैं, person that emotionally intelligent person will know. He will know about his own emotions also. He will accept them. He will understand and. main thing which were this emotional intelligent person does and i think uh, most of the teachers in some way we, now this is a matter of degree highly emotional intelligent or a uh, little emotional we mostly are because we deal with faces we deal with people we deal with children day after day and we see multitude of expressions we know all the expressions so they know how to an emotionally intelligent person in 
the teacher knows how to understand themselves and to get good results about out of them and to regulate these emotions by regulating we will be talking again we have already been talking about it, managing them ekdam se nahi phat parna you can uh, talk about an anecdote over here so if you have been feeling many times that you want to be harsh to someone you want to hurt someone you are or someone by some means just maybe somebody your worker in your lab or a fellow teacher and you hold yourself back you don't do it so you understand this is a good example you know that you are in a present incident you understood that you are getting angry and you are not supposed to be like this in this situation so hold yourself back this is how ai works this is how in in intelligence works thus the emotionally intelligent person is skilled in four areas we discussed but i repeat identifying emotions identifying emotions other person is sad or angry or worried or disturbed or under stress what he is expressing or he is not liking he is jealous this is also an emotion we used we have to learn to identify and then use this emotion if one is happy one is sad these emotions in others and self we gone through it we discussed it we learned this in the earlier uh, uh, it, by the king we have to use this emotions in a positive way we don't have to use anger we have to use tolerance we have to use acceptance we have when we are but angry we have to look back and try to know why it is making us angry and use that goodness in yourself a positive emotion and then bring it out and if there is some negative emotion you perceive in other person you understand and react like that and uh, again and this is uh, a wrong word to use you don't react you respond like that the last thing about emotional intelligence and और रेगुलेट आप बिल्कुल ही आउट ऑफ कंट्रोल नहीं हो जाइए यू हैव दैट डजंट मीन दैट डजंट मीन दैट यू डोंट हैव टू बी एंग्री दैट डजंट मीन दैट यू कांट बी सैड और यू कांट बी अनहैप्पी कांट बी गेट जेलस यू कैन बट टू व्हाट अमाउंट एंड व्हेन एंड टू व्हाट रिजल्ट हाउ इट इज अफेक्टिंग अदर पीपल नोइंग ऑल दिस दैट इज इन योर फ्रेंड four dimensions again of emotional intelligence uh, everybody knows and uh, you know that dr gayer theory they have some they keep giving us models and everything about information about emotional intelligence it is perceiving emotions using emotions to facilitate their thoughts now how do we use our emotion how do we uh, how does this emotion facilitate our thought i can give you an example we facilitate our thoughts by being knowing how are we feeling knowing that we are sad or not knowing we are happy or not that way by using emotion we can facilitate our thought by knowing that and how we have to react to this situation then again we have been through this up to time understanding emotions and managing emotion when we done all this uh, emotional intelligence is mostly about knowing about emotions in other seeing them perceiving them and realizing what's happening around us and what's happening inside you and then managing the emotion emotions get out of hand use them in a control in a productive manner you can get mildly angry with your student you can be harsh to so managing uh, in now again when i say this when we talk about this when we talk about emotional intelligence even this is then it was always uh, basically meant to be in an interactive situation then in a classroom situation but we do not have a classroom situation right now we are working from home so 
I, that now when working from home, we are teaching students from home. There is no time travel as such. Everybody, when you are home, they want to be around you. They want to attend attention. So you don't have to be uh, harassed. Huh? Now I'm talking about uh, as a person, but a teacher is a person too. When they are home, so they have to understand that when they have to give the time to the students, but even the family is around them and they expect you to be around them and listen to them. So you manage your emotions. You understand emotions in others. We will do this. So I all of you, all listeners, know about this properly by now. EQ model was also proposed, which again says the same thing in a little bit different way. So there are five components and how we judge that a person is a high emotional EQ is emotional quotient. Everybody knows that. The four the five domains or the five components are first self-awareness what is self-awareness i've been through this so we've been discussing it when a person has an ability to recognize and understand their emotion a teacher knows when he is getting irritated so we will talk about the skills later on how to uh, manage this we will talk about it later on but right now we have to just know that self-awareness is one model, one component of emotional intelligence. The second is self-regulation, which says that when a person has an ability to appropriately express, regulate, and manage emotions, not in abundance, but yes, you can have it abundantly, but not in such a way when other person is uh, hurting or Ma'am, Lyle, you have want to say something? Okay, okay, okay. So the next next point I'm coming to is motivation. Um, Dr. Paul talked about it being motivated by internal reasons and rather than external rewards. You feel good about it. You feel good being happy. You feel good doing your work, whatever you are doing. You put feel, feel good. You feel good about teaching. That is your motivator. A salary is your motivator. That is external reward. Everyone needs salary that we are working. But again, even then, we are getting salary cuts these days. Huh? Everybody knows <coughs> your allowances are being cut. You know? All the ministries, they are taking uh, your half of your salary for charity and all. But you feel good about what you are doing. You are motivated. You are connected to your student. You feel motivated internally to do. Then the most important next point I'm coming to is safety. Everybody knows, and I think, but they have to do this. They have to realize this. They have to understand this. That what empathy is. Empathy is an ability to understand how other people are feeling and see things from their perspective. When you get angry at your colleague, if you get angry at your student, my te in, or your teaching learner, and your work environment. If your student is not, you give a lecture. It happens, it mostly happens in the class. When we ask a student, Kaan dekh rahe? Kya kar rahe? Nahi nahi ho? these kind of things. They keep, they keep happening. So when we see a certain child, a certain student, certain colleague, he is not around when he's supposed to be, he's not doing, he's not paying attention, he's not focusing when they are supposed to be. So you have to stop and try to see the things from their perspective. Try to be in their shoes. Why is it so? Why is it so? I Mostly I think teachers do. I too go back to my childhood days. I go back to my school days and uh, try to understand that I, actually what my, he might be thinking, what he might be getting bored, or he's not understanding, or he's uh, worried about something. So. Empathy is to understand emotion of the other person from their perspective. Again, the best part and the important part is social skills. The fifth component of EQ model is we have the person who is emotionally intelligent has ability to socially interact mm -hmm. with others and get the outcome they want. They don't keep to themselves. This will not do. A teacher can hardly, uh, in primary and secondary uh, schools, they can hardly uh, keep to themselves. They are milling students.
pupils all the time. Every child wants to talk to the teacher, but still, they do they get tired, they do get worried, they do get harassed, but again, they have to work upon their uh, social skills and the ability to interact with others. When I say ability to interact with others, I uh, talk about peers. I talk about uh, fellow colleagues, all the teachers. And talk in a way, when you are not putting them down, when you are not insulting them, when a lab assistant, when somebody, he hasn't done, done anything, something, done something wrong, something without asking you. So uh, you can always tell them, <laughs> You must have thought that this will make me happy. Are you trying to help me? So you've done this. Well, nice to see Dr. Kalinder. Hi. So this is, uh, uh, am I running out of time? You let me know, please. You, you have few minutes more. You few minutes? Okay, okay. I'll just rush it through. So ability to socially interact with others and and get what you want to do in a nicer way. You don't be authoritative, you don't dictate, but you still get your things done. All the teachers feel this and do this all the time. Now, how to develop your emotional intelligence skills? We've been talking about emotional intelligence, but can we develop it? If I feel, if a certain teacher or certain student feels that he is not uh, up to all these parameters, he doesn't does not have these things, but can they be learned? So of course they can be learned. Emotional skills are, you can work upon your self-awareness. Now, again, self-awareness is knowing your emotions and knowing other people's emotions. Then, reframe your perceptions. How to reframe your perception? You can think of a situation, would you get in a glass, adha bhara or adha khali. Whatever you're feeling in that situation, you reframe in a better way. Us cheez chiti ko aap kisi aur tarah se present karein, in a positive color dein usko. So, aap usko apne perception ko aur positive banai ke, aray, ye mein bilkul nahin kar sakti. Ek tarika ye hai. Ek tarika hai, ki yes, I will try. Of course, I can do this. I will uh, prepare this lesson and whatever. Again, become aware of your emotional triggers. What makes you, if you have to work upon on your emotional intelligence skills, want to feel that you're very emotionally intelligent, trying to know about other people and your emotion. So one has also to know about all these triggers. What makes you, uh, what irritates you? There are so many triggers. Somebody uh, gets upset by how a person is sitting. There was, uh, I recall one of my teachers, who would never, never, never allow a student to slouch or fiddle with her thing. The moment she uh, saw uh, us fiddling with our pen or scribbling anything or slouching, she would really get upset and <laughs> then you will have a nice bashing, like verbal bashing. So what you one should be aware about what makes them upset and work upon it. Recognize and celebrate your positive emotions. What that is? Learn to be kind. Be, uh, feel great gratitude. If there are so many things. In this hard uh, times also, there are so many people uh, ready to uh, give help. We are getting so many webinars and so many online postings that we have already so much material uh, uh, popping up for us to work and to make our lessons and do whatever we are doing. So we can learn to recognize what positive uh, emotions are there in us. Kindness be herself. We should feel gratitude towards others. This is a way of developing all your emotional skills or emotional intelligence. Now, what we were initially started with was give that how resilience helps emotional intelligence. They go hand in hand. Resilience works with emotional. A resilient person can be emotionally intelligent too, vice versa. So I've put up some points. You must be saying teachers with better emotional intelligence have better resilience. Studies have been showing that having higher emotional intelligence adap is adaptive. We already talked in the beginning, it was all about adaptation. In stressful circumstances, showing resilience. Teachers with better emotional intelligence are able to accurately perceive and appraise their emotions, 
आई नो हाउ एंड वेन टू एक्सप्रेस द इमोशन अनड्यूली गुस्सा नहीं हो जाना अनड्यूली चीखना चिल्लाना नहीं ठीक है the of course i said when i talked about resilience i said uh, a resilient person does feel the sadness he feels down also he feels angry also but then how to manage them is about emotional intelligence high degree of emotional intelligence show a greater degree of resilience we have already said that hence emotional intelligence stands out as a critical factor what we had uh, begun with in fostering resilience in teachers if uh, we can and there are so many educative materials so many workshop we can uh, if any teacher feels they need to, these uh, emotions or these things managing emotions to be work upon so we can get help from certain workshop and skill training with her and work upon the skills emotional intelligence skills so i can conclude we began with adaptable we had situation it was locked down we had to work from home we adapted we realized that yes it is here to stay so we worked on our other methods we worked on e learning then resilience we jump back on for certain time wondering what is happening but everybody all the teachers they are out there they jump back and yes this all helps in emotional intelligence of an individual of a teacher and how to have to Uh, i can sum up in words of daniel goleman emotional self control delaying gratification and stifling impulsiveness underlies accomplishment of every sort which is very very important for a teacher well uh, there was another quote can i share i had uh, planned to put it up in the beginning only uh, most of people must have heard that uh, roosevelt man once said that do what you can with what you have where you are i think isme hum puri tarah se dhal gaye we are teaching with what the resources we have being resilient being emotionally intelligent working upon our skills and doing things from where we are thank you thank you thank you so much dr singh for such an interesting informative and enriching session let me tell you that all of us enjoyed it thoroughly and now we have a brief question answer session and i invite dr s rad to meet the session dr s rad yeah. uh, thank you dr singh your talk was very elaborate and self explanatory but there are some questions of the participants and we will take a few of them first question is is resilience a skill or quality okay uh, i think i uh, initially gave my uh, a definition in uh, ppt uh, can i uh, and excuse again, me can i interrupt dr singh uh, yeah please unshare your screen so that you can be seen okay, on the full screen okay 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 i'll do that that mm. i'll just uh, i'll continue uh, it's not hard but i'll continue till then i'm asking for help i did it ma'am yeah no it's okay and i'm asking for her well Yeah, I did it, ma'am. Now you are. Now it's not there. You are visible. I made it. Made it to full screen picture. PPT option. See, an emotionally intelligent person seeks help, seeks social support, and they learn what what I am doing. Okay, uh, ma'am. So yes. I'll continue. Your question was that is it a skill or is it a quality? Yes, ma'am. So. Basically, a, a dynamic process. This uh, resilience is a diamond dynamic process. But yet, we can have certain skills by which we we can learn. Social skills defined by responses. Social skills are defined by outlook, and they are adaptive. So 
we can also call that this is in a, a skill in a way Re resilience is a skill and we can learn it have i answered your question yes ma'am yes just one more question is there ma'am uh, how can we prove resilience yeah uh, how can we, how can we prove resilience can we prove resilience yeah, i think i talked about it yes yes pt so what do resilient people do see i'll just uh, yeah how can we prove about it a person who is emotionally resilient is able to uh, and we are talking about a teacher is always always of knowing he knows what other thinking this is how we can prove that we are resilient hmm? we are aware of our emotion we are aware of our inner potential the person who is aware of their inner potential a teacher who is there are so many untapped potential in all the teachers all the learners we are still learning so when this proves that they are resilient again when a person thinks before reacting this proves that he is resilient also this is also managing emotions a part of emotional intelligence if a person is patient he has lots of patience all teachers need loads of patience so if they are patient they are understanding and willing to adapt this shows this proves that they are resilient a resilient person again is high on forgiveness is high on acceptance he doesn't believe in putting other people down he believes in saying sorry that's why you come back to the situation you come back to ground zero koi jhagda nahi and then you begin again we bounce back if there is a argument or if there is such a situation a resilient person always tries to find solutions he is not the one giving uh, posing questions or problem all the time he is the one who is giving solution teachers they are and i think uh, again and again i am feeling that they already are resilient and they are emotionally intelligent all the teachers another point which proves that a person is resilient is that they express their emotion in socially acceptable way okay they have teachers who just snatch the books school mein hota hai they snatch the book from you and they bang thing so uh, or this uh, shout loudly or argue uh, in a uh, rooms and all argue with teacher this is not what a then aap pehchan jaiye this person is not resilient he is not ready to bounce back he is not trying to find solutions he is posing he is posing problem again i think i have said it somewhere earlier also a resilient person because a resilient person has to come back in original shape so he can't harbor anything negative inside anything wrong inside anything bad inside a resilient person or emotionally resilient person who is ready to bounce back he does not bottle up negative the emotion is always ready to talk about talk about it discuss it even in there is a, a argument somewhere again a resilient person does not have any shame in asking for help they go ahead and ask for help sabko sab kuch nahi aata hum all knowing nahi hai so jab jab naya method chala hai so we go ahead and ask for help and do it they believe in sorting out conflicts not building conflicts not building resistance and they are also able to make long term relationships i think uh, these are proofs enough even if you have five of these things in a person if a teacher feels that he can do five of these things believe me he is resilient he is not very resilient thank you dr singh thanks a lot and now before we begin session 2 i request dr beck 
to say a few instructions regarding feedback form. Okay. Can I give? Yes, ma'am. Dr. Beck. Before anybody else is speaking anything, Dr. Calendar, thank you, thank you so much for having Stay me. Stay with us. Stay with us till the end. <laughs> we are on. I'm still fighting with how to put myself back on the screen and put the PPT. No, no, out. no. You you are on the screen, madam. You are I'm, on the screen. Uh, full. Uh, you can, Dr. Can, Rajan has done it. Dr. Oh, Rajan has done screen. it. You are oh, on. Okay, fine, fine, fine. I can't see myself properly. So I'm a bit upset. I took the liberty of stopping your share, screen share and now you're full screen. <laughs> thank you, thank you so, thank much. You so much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'm here. I'll be wrong. I'm all wrong. right. Now, before we begin session two, I request Dr. Beck to please say a few instructions regarding feedback form. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, participants, please pay attention instructions once again. All the participants are requested to keep their audio mute and video off. Please do not share your screen during the session as it might interfere with the presentations of the speakers. Type your questions or queries to the chat box only. After the webinar session, the participants are requested to fill and submit their feedback form so that e-certificates can be generated. Feedback links will be sent after the webinar. Kindly send, send us the full feedback form by 19 June 2020, latest by 12 a.m. midnight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Beck. Now the time for session two. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Mrs. S. Calendar, Head of B.A. Department, Isabella Thoban College, Lucknow. Dr. Calendar has a wide experience of over 37 years of teaching and guiding teacher trainings, having joined IT College way back in 1983 and is known as a teacher par excellence. She holds her master's in psychology from St. John's College, Agra and PhD in psychology from Agra College, Agra. Psychology being her area of specialization, she used this brilliantly for counseling several students and many other people in personal as well as professional matters. Apart from her role in academics, she has shouldered many administrative responsibilities with ease. Dr. Calendar has to her credit published chapters in books both nationally and internationally. She has been invited as resource person in UGC sponsored refresher courses, examined PhD thesis of other universities, and has also been invited for radio talks. She has chaired and participated in many deliberations on emotional intelligence. And now I invite her to enlighten us with the next sub theme of our webinar, role of emotionally intelligent teacher in times of crisis. Dr. S. Calendar. Thank you, Dr. Ren. It's my privilege to be part of this webinar as one of the speaker. I would like to thank our principal, Dr. Prakash, for giving me this opportunity. The topic which I am going to deal is role of emotional, emotionally intelligent teacher in times of crisis. Dr. Rajan, will you share my slides? Yes, sure. The topic of the session is role of emotionally intelligent teacher in times of crisis. Now, before I go on to deliberate on this topic, I would like to share the objectives of this session. After completion of this session, we will be able to second slide. This is Dr. Edla Paul's slide. Second, second slide. Yes, yes. Just a moment. So after completion of this session, we will be able to 
understand challenges faced by teachers also understand the role of emotional intelligence in facing challenges due to crisis situation and we will be able to understand that emotional intelligence plays a key role in maintaining mental health of a teacher now next slide before we go further we must understand what do we mean by a crisis situation next slide mrs rajan please uh, what do we mean by a crisis situation we all are experiences we all are experiences uh, covid 19 situation and we call it a crisis situation crisis is a specific unexpected and non routine event which create high level of uncertainty and threat or perceived threat to an organization's high priority goals and i would say that it is a threat to personal or individuals goals also crisis create severe difficulties for people and it poses various dangers it poses emotional challenges also and it dis disrupts life at all levels now because of this covid 19 crisis teachers are facing several challenges and if we classify them into categories we can classify it into two categories personal challenges and professional challenges now personal challenges are challenges which everybody is facing and teachers are also facing and under personal challenges i have listed few challenges first is lack of awareness we all are not exactly aware about the nature of the corona virus how long it will go what are the medicines for it whether i will get the infection or not we are all unaware about it and that is causing fear and anxiety about the disease we are worried about our health and about the health of our family members therefore we are finding it difficult to concentrate there are change in our sleeping and eating pattern and we have also developed in this course of covid 19 a habit of panic buying holding things washing hands again and again cleaning house and another challenge is that we are managing home and work together because for teachers classes are shifted to homes so they are doing their household work as well as their Uh, teaching work from the home only now managing household work all alone is another challenge and dealing with pre existing health problem is also a challenge many of us or some of us have pre existing health problem and we are worried if something happen to us what will we do will we find doctor will we get the treatment these are the challenges which we are facing these days and we are also looking after old people in a house and children also now before i go on for professional challenges which teachers are facing we should know why teachers are facing these professional challenges now because of the covid 19 the whole educational scenario is changed there is sudden lockdown due to new corona virus sudden closure of schools and colleges across the globe and because of this there is a sudden switching over to online teaching and because of that teachers role is also suddenly transformed and because of this teacher is facing many professional challenges again if we divide professional challenges into categories challenges there are challenges which are related to technology teachers are not trained for online teaching methods they are not trained to transform teaching material into digital format because when we switched over to online teaching not much planning was done not much thought was given suddenly they were shifted to online teaching so many of them are unaware about learning management systems available online our government uh, of india it has also provided few learning management systems like diksha like swam 
but we don't know about them. There, there is unavailability of technological resources also. And there is another big issue in front of teachers is internet connectivity. If we go by the National Survey of India, National uh, Sample Survey Office of India, 2017 and 18, we, we find that only 23.9% per, uh, households have uh, internet connections. It's a very small percentage. If we go by rural or urban terms, then only 42% of urban, urban households have internet connectivity. And in rural areas, only 14.9% have internet connectivity. It's a great digital divide which has to be addressed. And teachers, they find it difficult when teachers if they are not having internet connectivity, how can they reach to students? And if their student doesn't have internet connectivity or internet connection, how their students can connect to a teacher? That is a problem. And another professional challenge is of not having a personal device. Um, our teachers, they, they don't have their personal device. Sometimes they share that, this device with their family members, either with their husband or children. Or if if children are also having classes and parents are taking classes as a teacher, so that is a problem. Now, other challenges, professional under under other challenges or professional challenges comes the to maintain the quality and effectiveness of online teaching. Challenge of keeping students attentive. Now, class is shifted to home. Teachers and students are not in one room face to face. So it is very difficult for a teacher to keep a track whether students are attentive or not, whether they are still listening to her or they have switched over to some other side. So it is very difficult to keep them attentive or to supervise their work. There is challenge of teaching small children. It is very difficult to teach small children through online methods. Yesterday only, I was talking to her mother and she was telling me that at 7.30 in the evening, there was a class for her four-year-old daughter. And she was worried and she was completing her household work so that she can sit with her four-year-old daughter so that she can attend online classes. So it is very difficult to like uh, teach small children through online classes. There is challenge of dealing with distress calls. Now, because of this COVID-19, many people are anxious, they are facing problems, they are worried about many things. So they try to find out some solution or some people whom they can talk to. So parents were calling teachers, students were calling teachers, and teacher all the time is busy with like addressing these kind of problems. Sometimes teacher face problem of lack of support from the family or the authority. Sometimes family, they don't cooperate. And sometimes school authorities, principals, head, they don't understand the problem of teacher, why she's not able to like prepare a lesson and why she's not able to connect with students. There is challenge of dealing with parents interference also because class is shifted to home. Parents, they also sit with their children. And some parents, they are not like professional, so they interfere also with the class, they argue with the teachers also. And another very big challenge, which cannot be ignored, is challenge of job loss and salary cut. Teachers, especially teachers who are teaching in private schools, and those schools, they are not getting their fees, uh, fees from parents. So teachers are apprehensive whether they will be a jobless or they will get their salary or not. Now, because of these challenges, which teachers are facing on personal, next slide, because of these challenges, which teachers are facing on personal and professional level, they are going through or they are experiences, experiencing various emotional issues or various mental health issues like depression, grief, acute stress, anxiety, worry, sense of loneliness, nervousness, sadness, hopelessness, 
fatigue, irritability, anger, and all these emotions are causing other problems like difficulty in sleeping, aches and pains in body. Now, being part of this educational faculty or being all of us, if we are teachers, we can identify with one or the other kind of emotions which teachers are experiencing. Now, when teachers are experiencing these kind of emotion, what we can do? We cannot leave it like that. There has to be, we, we have to address them. And if they are left without addressing them, teachers will definitely face severe mental health problems. Now, we cannot ignore teachers. The question is why the well-being of teachers cannot be ignored. Teachers are the most important members of the society. They are instrumental in shaping future leaders. Teachers are change agents. Teachers are role models for students. Teachers are the producers of future inventors, educationists, doctors, engineers, etc. And teachers are the ones who prepare students as responsible global citizens. Therefore, we can say that it is the teacher who builds our society. It is the teacher on whom the whole texture of the society is dependent upon or the development of nation depends upon teacher. Now the question is how to deal with these emotional issues. I would like to point out only two things here. These issues has to be like dealt with and how they can how we can deal with them one is that emotional issues can only be dealt with emotional management if we develop skills to uh, skills for emotional management we can we are deal with the emotional issues another point is that emotional management in the wake of crisis requires emotionally intelligent teachers teachers with teachers equipped with emotional skills and competencies. Now, what are these skills and competencies? Ma'am Edla Paul and Dr. Rachna both have uh, already defined what is emotional intelligence and they have already discussed various elements of emotional intelligence. So I will not go on in detail uh, with this slide, only I will read these components which Goldman has given in 1985, self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. Out of these five skills, first three skills are personal emotional skills. And if we develop these skills, we will be able to know ourselves, our emotion, and emotion of other people. Empathy and social skills are actually interpersonal skills. And it helps us to have interpersonal relationship. If we develop these skills, we will be able to relate in a much better way with other people. So we can say that emotional intelligence skills are the key elements to deal with crisis situation and to maintain one's emotional and psychological health. Another question which comes to our mind then is how can we acquire next slide please another question which comes to our mind is how can we acquire these emotional skills or competencies before that uh, we discuss how these emotional skills can be acquired i would like to share with you a good news and the good news is that these emotional skills are trainable they can be acquired the good news is that emotional intelligence has the potential to improve and develop over a period of time in a conducive emotional environment. Training programs, coaching and practice has been found to effectively improve a person's emotional intelligence. This news encourages us that yes, we can do something on personal level as well as on institution level to improve our emotional skills and we can become emotionally intelligent teachers can deal effectively with different classroom situations as well as a personal crisis situation.
now to enhance our emotional intelligence skills again i have divided them into two parts uh, on personal level and on institutional level previous slide previous slide, slide please this uh, enhancing emotional intelligence 15th slide yes this is 16th only ha oh, all right all right now how can we enhance our emotional intelligence now by now and during this period even uh, have a chance to talk to many people and people are they are really uh, worried how to deal with this situation sometimes i talk to my friend they are saying i feel very low today i don't know what to do i can't see people around so they want some solution to deal with this crisis situation and one solution is to enhance emotional intelligence or emotional skills on personal level to become an effective teacher or to uh, discharge the role of an effective teacher um, of a facilitator as facilitator or as a change agent or as a motivator or as a knowledge worker we should practice this first is manage your reaction to people if we practice to manage our reaction to people when we react to people we should go back and see how we have reacted were we judgmental have we reacted without or uh, without considering the facts we should manage our reactions and it should be done on a regular basis if we we will we are motivated we practice then we will definitely develop these skills in us regular self evaluation is required evaluate yourself regularly self assessment is important we should be aware about our weaknesses and our strengths and we should realize that we are not perfect watch your reactions to stressful situation everybody's facing stressful situation how we are reacting to it we should watch that are we upset or we are blaming others for the stressful situation or we are taking uh, in it as a course of life be accountable to your actions we should be responsible or we should have sense of responsibility for our actions sometimes when we are given some responsibility and things go wrong we try to find some scapegoat and we try to shift the blame to other people but emotionally intelligent person is a person who is willing to take responsibility of her action we can practice this also examine how your actions will affect others when we are in a group or we are working in a group we are working with people we react to them and and we should examine how we are reacting are we harsh to them or what are are we sensitive to them practice to develop self awareness this is the first and the foremost um, intelligence skill which goldman has given self awareness we should be able to understand our emotions we, we should be able to identify our emotion we should be able to name our emotion sometimes we are we are uneasy but we don't know whether we are worried or we are angry or we are uh, afraid of something so we should practice develop self awareness be intrinsically motivated this is a personal skill a personal emotional skill but what kind of motivation we should be intrinsically or internally motivated we should not see when uh, we have to do something we should be goal oriented and we should not try to find out uh, to get external rewards next slide another important skill emotional skill which teachers can master on personal level is their communication skill this is very important when we are relating to other people communication is important whatever we are saying are we sure that the other person is understanding the same thing so we should develop communication skill say things in a specific and clear manner in communication skills also comes the 
skill of listening it is very important to develop personal interpersonal relationship or to be emotionally intelligent this listening skill is whether we are able to listen what other people are saying or we are interpreting it in our terms about listening skill i would say that every teacher should have or should develop the skill of listening things which are not even communicated to you when you are meeting your friends when you are meeting your colleagues can you hear that she is not well today can you hear <coughs> that she is going on some difficult days so that listening skill is very important avoid reacting to conflicting situation this is very important that we should we should respond rather react to conflicting situation when we come or we uh, face some conflicting situation attitude should be of discussion and debate talking about and, and like ex, uh, understanding the point of view of other person develop positive attitude attitude of uh, uh, attitude that whatever we are doing we will be successful in that sometimes we before starting a work we say that no we can't do it but we should have the positive attitude about things do not be over sensitive to opinion of others we should take critique of other people well we should not be over sensitive when people are giving their opinions or they are like uh, expressing some criticism just take it as an opportunity to improve and you will see that it will bring lot of difference to your life and to the life of people around you be approachable and sociable dr singh has also mentioned that especially in this time of corona virus we have to be sociable sociable and approachable we are inside our houses most of the time but we should not be aloof we should not isolate ourselves we can be in touch with our friends on phones on um, uh, Um, on me other media uh, platforms but we should be sociable collaborate and cooperate this is very important emotional skills we should learn how to work with others when some responsibility is given to you as a teacher just divide it among other people share it with them share your apprehension share your joy so collaborate and take cooperate with others and take cooperation from other people these things are very infectious if you will cooperate with other then other people will definitely cooperate with you have a self control it is important and uh, it is it, it means that regulating your emotions we should not only know our emotions we should know how to manage our emotions and how to regulate our emotion how to express them and it can be developed through practice be confident but i am saying be confident and i am not saying be over confident one should be confident of herself and besides confident we should have a realistic uh, concept about ourselves so these are the some personal um, like these are the skills which can be developed on personal basis but for this it is very important that to develop these intelligence skill we have to be motivated ourselves and practice these skills on regular basis perseverance and determination is the key if you are you will like determine that you will develop these skills in you you will be able to develop these skills in you i can assure you on institutional level few suggestions i have drawn out that intervention studies at institutional level next slide next slide please on institutional levels we can say that counseling centers should be set up and in during this covid 19 time government is setting up counselor so that people with distress they can call them but i suggest that there should be a separate counseling center for teachers teachers are so important we cannot ignore 
and teachers have so, uh, such variety of problems so there should be separate counselors from there there should be phone numbers some place where, <coughs> where teachers can look up to call and talk share their problems should be there heads of the institution or principals of in institution they have great responsibility at this time of covid 19 now the teachers are going through all these problems and principals have the responsibility of maintaining conducive learning environment in their schools they should find out ways to manage manage emotional climate of the school the emotional climate of the school should be of security should be of support should be of collaboration or cooperation instead of having a climate of stress insecurity blame and punishment so principals have a great responsibility to maintain the mental health of the teacher and to produce emotionally intelligent teachers now institutional support system should be developed or institution can tie up with experts or counselor sometimes we don't find ourselves equipped to counsel our teachers so we can tie up with experts of counseling for that next faculty development programs such as training workshops orientation courses should be organized for our teachers now the these programs can be organized on two levels on schools where teachers are working principals can organize these programs they can invite lectures or they can tie up with teachers training program and organize these workshops and on other level teachers training program should take the responsibility of organizing these workshops orientation courses orientation program to enhance or to develop or to aid emotion developed of emotional intelligence in teachers uh, if you go online and if you browse you will find several courses online some of them are free there are several courses there are several certificate courses there are several like master classes training program online they are available and the last component last suggestion which i would like to give as intervention studies is strategies at institutional level is that the component of emotional intelligence in curriculum of teacher education should be added this is very important this is the grassroots level where teachers are being produced and if we develop emotional intelligence at that level the whole climate of our educational system our society will be changed to conclude next slide to conclude i would say that the time to start journey to become an emotionally intelligent teacher is now becoming emotionally intelligent is the process not a product it starts with individual himself i wish and encourage all of you to start this journey today and i assure you that you will at one day you will be emotionally intelligent teacher and be able to deal with any kind of difficult or crisis situation thank you very much and god bless you thank you very much dr calendar for such an informative presentation thank you once again now we'll move on to the question answer session and i invite dr archana kapoor to moderate this particular session Dr. Kapoor, uh, I can see that uh, uh, the participants are so enthusiastic, and all the Dr. Calendar, you have taken up all the issues, but still there are a few queries. The first question that participants want to know: How can emotionally intelligent teachers help students in times of crisis? Dr. Calendar. okay emotionally intelligent teachers have many abilities many skills and the most important skill to deal with crisis situation or deal with the students having crisis is listening we 
should be able to listen to our student. We should be able to give a patient hearing to our student. We should not be judgmental when they are sharing something. We should not be judgmental. We should not decide whatever they are saying is right or wrong. Simply listen. And if you will listen to them and only share that what you will do in this kind of situation, I think you will, you will be able to solve the problem. Now, another is, if emotional intelligence has the potential to improve and develop, as you were saying, how can this be made possible? Because everybody wants to become emotionally intelligent. Uh, Dr. Kapoor, I think this is the, this is the thing which I had taken, it in, uh, uh, taken in detail that emotional intelligence can be developed. It's a two-pronged process. It can be developed on personal level and on institutional level. On personal level, I had already given you 14-15 uh, points that what you should practice. Like you should manage your emotion, you should manage your reactions like that. And on institutional levels, we should take the responsibility. As teacher education institution, we should take the responsibility to organize training workshop workshop or um, orientation courses and principles are very important to maintain the mental health of their teachers or to develop emotionally emotional skills in them so principals our head of the institution should also take responsibility and very interesting question is how do we identify an emotionally intelligent person uh, how do we identify? You mean that uh, how do we recognize that who is emotional, yes. Yes. emotionally intelligent? Yes, Dr. Uh, see, uh, we have already discussed characteristics or the main component of emotional intelligence. And if you see a person who is calm, poised, if you see a person who doesn't react so like um, uh, quickly, if you see a person who is, who is listening to you, if you see a person who has uh, like clarity of thought, a person who understands your emotion, a person who can like um, see or perceive things from your perspective, then you find out. Then you can say that yes, she is a emotionally intelligent person. Thank you. Am Dr. I able to answer? Yes, yes. Thank you so much. We have come to the end of this webinar. And I again request Dr. Achna Kapoor to say the concluding remarks and vote of thanks. Dr. Kapoor. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Rajan. As we come to the culmination stage of this webinar, I would like to express my deep sense of gratitude to Dr. Paul, Dr. Singh, and Dr. Calendar for your enriching presentation and vibrant interactive session. The deliberations have addressed very important and contemporary issues related to emotional intelligence, educators key to meet challenges due to COVID-19. It would be nice to mention some key points I was able to gather after the deliberations during the webinar. A keynote speaker, Dr. Adila Paul, very aptly made us realize the importance of emotional intelligence and one thing was very interesting, how emotions hijack our behavior. And also she threw light on the fact that teachers are considered as torchbearers of society and play an important role during crisis times like COVID-19. She also brought to fore that how we can manage our own and other behavior and to build strong relationships and make informed decisions. Virtual emotional intelligence, a key to, present to the present pandemic, was another very interesting aspect mentioned by her. The present situation has brought forth multiple challenges for the teachers and for everybody. This unprecedented down condition has affected all spheres accompanied by stress and strain. In such situations, society always looks up to teachers for direction, guidance, solace and relief. 
teachers have always been considered a level above and are held in high esteem in times of crisis an emotionally intelligent teacher becomes the need of the art and is taken up in a very lucid manner by dr singh who brought forth the issue how emotional intelligence becomes a critical factor in fostering resilience in teachers dr singh mentioned <coughs> adaptability as a prime factor in emotional intelligence it was very nice to hear that resilience does not eliminate stress teachers and others do feel pain grief but mental outlook allows them to bounce back and resilient people view themselves as fighters as told by dr singh and they have high emotional intelligence then dr uh, now teachers are after all human beings and many a times they themselves become victims of psychological problems by encountering unusual strain and pressure dr s calendar in her explicit style reiterated this issue and also the fact that teachers well being cannot ignored cannot be ignored she pointed out the personal and professional challenges faced by teachers and the fact that in emotional intelligence can be developed it was a hard thing that pertinent issuing and emotional intelligence could be addressed in terms of the present situation it also made us feel health productivity and performance of an individual is directly linked to one's emotional intelligence the relationship between emotional factor and intelligence factor has once again been established that in managing crisis and handling all kinds of situations it is emotional intelligence that will always supersede as a takeaway from this webinar i would say that let us all try to become emotionally smart and guide others also in the same direction this webinar could not be completed speak administrative authorities and the organizing committee on behalf of isabella thoban college and the entire ba department family i wish to express immense gratitude to dr adila paul former principal Isabella Thoban College Lucknow and former principal Meston College of Education in I not address deliberating with clarity on the main theme of the webinar I'm thankful to you Dr Paul for taking time out from your busy and for sharing your expertise Dr Singh we are indeed appreciative of your agreeing so willingly to speak on the theme emotional intelligence a critical factor in fostering resilience in teachers we were privileged to have you with us i'm sure all of us presentation gratitude and heartfelt thanks special mention appreciation to dr kalina for your in depth explanation of the role of emotionally intelligent teachers in times of crisis and also create awareness deep gratitude to dr es charles president of the college for her support and thanks dr b prakash prince principal isabel as always emotional and guiding light her sound leadership in please accept our appreciation and gratitude
the overwhelming response and enthusiasm of the participants must be acknowledged and i extend a very warm thank you to all the participants who have contributed immensely to the success of this webinar i do hope you all found it useful an event like this requires much planning and dedication organization faculty for their hard work commitment and willingness to work beyond each department can contribute by deliberating on more such relevant issues once again thank you each one of you Stay home and stay safe.